the Niners are 2 and 0. Start the season 2 and 0 and this one was a little crazy. Let me tell you. Um I rewatched the game, everybody. I did my homework. And key takeaways for me, you have Garoppolo using his legs to pick up first downs, to pick up scramble for some yards and to score a touchdown. Um, that was big time. I feel like Garoppolo being able to use his legs. I mean, he's no mobile quarterback by any stretch of the imagination. But if you can extend a play instead of taking a, a sack, we'll take that. We'll take that. And he did that a couple times here in this game. So I think Garoppolo, though his start was shaky, he gradually got better during that game. And that's all we can ask for as fans. I mean, he has zero turnovers, uh, zero interceptions. And the offensive line, and credit some of that to Jimmy, what scrambling would you, we just talked about, zero sacks. Isn't that something crazy? Zero sacks. And offensive line, I mean, they couldn't get anything going. Credit the Eagles' defensive line for stuffing the run. They really did a good job. That's a really impressive defensive front for the Eagles. The Niners couldn't get anything going, but it wasn't because the offensive linemen were messing up. I mean, they did have some missed blocks here and there. Kyle Juszczyk, um was more, uh, I guess, evident when rewatching it. Um, he, he, I'm sure he's going to step up next week, but uh, he had an off week. Uh, use check. Uh, they were anticipating him to be a part of the run game, a part of the passing game, part of the screen game. Couldn't get anything going for use check, but I anticipate use check to bounce back. I'm, I'm not concerned about that at all. But offensive line in general, I mean. Last year, they were hit and miss. This year, they've been solid. They've been consistently solid work with pass protection, with uh, run block. Though, again, a very impressive defensive front. You got to give credit to the Eagles there. Um, but I think the Niners handled handled it well all around. Um, haven't been too many complaints at offensive line. Um and so that's always, always a positive sign. And then we talk about Javon Kinlaw coming back in this game and immediately making an impact. He didn't get a sack, um, but impact in special teams, blocking a field goal. And that that was a very important block because at that point you go up, you know, 6-0, and um, and so there were a couple of the Eagles messed up big time, I think. First of all, that was the block field goal. And then when they got in the red zone, they didn't kick for a field goal. They should have been up 9-0 before the Niners got the ball um, right before ha uh, the half was over. But they ended up going, doing that Philly special whatever play. K. Wan Williams did a phenomenal play sticking to um, his part of the field. And I mean, the Eagles didn't have nowhere to throw it. So um, the Eagles messed up pretty badly there. But the Niners came back and capitalized on that. And, you know, when you block a field goal, I mean, that turns the momentum over to that team automatically. And so you're kind of like stealing points from the opposition. And that's what Kinlaw did. Kinlaw saved us three points. Um, and so still waiting for him to get his feet under him for his pass rush but I mean he wasn't terrible there um and then another another guy I don't think a lot of people are talking about is Josh Norman came in stepped up played well I mean there weren't a lot of targets his way but whenever you're not talking about a corner that much you're either doing solid work you're doing a terrible job or you're doing a great job and I think Norman did a solid work um, not a lot of targets. I expect maybe next week uh, Green Bay targets him a bit more, test him out a little bit deep. But I, th I thought the Niners, speaking of defense, played the deep ball tremendously. Ward had a pass breakup. Tar had a pass breakup. Lenore, I mean, they're like, you know what? You want to go deep? All right, we have some DBs out there that can um, have some ball skills. And I think Tart and Ward 
are one of the top two safeties with those type of ball skills. So um, credit to the defense. I mean, D'Amico Ryans really had an impressive play calling. I think he really stepped up in this game, putting players in positions to succeed. Um, special teams played great. Wishnowski, I mean, when did Wishnowski start like punting under the five? It's crazy to me how how much like there was a preseason game. I don't know if it was the last one or the second to last where special teams were like, what the hell is going on? We gave up a fifth round pick for this punter. Like this guy's shanking them. But now I think coach really put them and um, really has coached them well in a position where, I mean, you had um, you had a guy, Trent, I, I believe it's Trent Cannon. I don't want to butcher this. Let me search up his name. He actually had a play in this game as a running back because, good Lord, all of our running backs got hurt. I mean, Elijah Mitchell was able to return, but he was dealing with a shoulder. Um, Trey Sermon, I feel so bad for him. His first carry in the NFL you get hit in the head three different ways. I mean, what a elbow, a helmet, and then the ground just hits you. I mean, that was crazy. And I hope he's able to return. I hope the concussion isn't too serious, although he was there on the floor for, for quite some time. Um, but I hope he turns out to be okay. I thought it was much worse. I thought it was like a, uh, uh, at first, I thought his knee was kind of just cut because the defender went really low. I didn't. I didn't realize that he hit his helmet first. I thought he just went straight knees. And normally, if you don't see a guy coming like that and you're a running back, bye-bye knees. So I'm glad. I guess I shouldn't say I'm glad. It's a positive sign that he was able to get up and walk. Um, but we'll we'll monitor that as the week progresses. But then you have Hasty. I think he was dealing with an ankle injury. And the reason Trey Sermon got in on that play was because the previous play, Hasty fumbles it on a toss so it's like hasty needs to step it up there and then um it's very unfortunate that trey sermon i mean picked up like eight nine yards on that play and he goes down so that kind of sucks but uh running backs i mean what was once a strength right we see this time and time again when the niners have a strength it slowly diminishes because of injuries and you're seeing that with running backs now luckily you know we do have very talented running backs so that was an area that, okay, maybe one guy goes down, the next guy can, can come in and step up. But when you have two, three guys go down, there's only so much you can do seeing that with Baltimore. So um, that's an area of concern at the moment. But, uh, yeah, I was looking for for the guy from special teams who was the gunner. Who was the gunner? So he was the third running back on the team. Actually, the fourth. He was the fourth running back. Um, and so luckily he was active. Jesus, I'm, I'm having so much trouble finding this guy. Trent Cannon. There you go. I didn't want to butcher his name, Trent, Trent Cannon. But um, he was the guy who had like one or two carries after Trey Sermon went down. And then Elijah Mitchell came back in. And um, hopefully it was just a stinger for Elijah Mitchell. But, I mean, this is the type of season it looks like it's going gonna, it's gonna to be, right? You're going to pick up guys from the practice squad, expect them to, you know, to have one or two solid plays just to, like, just to, like, you know, make sure that the ship is riding well. And Niners are, are getting really battle-tested at, at running back. And so... Um, we're going to we're going to see where that takes us but um the last key takeaway I want to talk about is Diamond Lenore corner played outstanding i mean when i look at the five defensive players that played well this sunday i look at DJ Jones Fred Warner Nick Bosa Eric Armstead and Lenore he was great in this game and it was it wasn't just oh he didn't allow anything they targeted him a lot he had a pass breakup he had you know he was there on tackles he got beat deep like that was a big test for him how are you going to respond 
he responded well. Better than what I'd hoped for. As a rookie, he's been a steal. He's been a steal. I think he was a fifth round pick. Fifth, fourth round pick. Man, that guy looks like a steal. And if it, if we have we we didn't have Lenore, God knows where we'd be at right now. We'd probably be one and one best because the Eagles really try to test them. And to his credit, he didn't give up much. He did give up that that long pass, but guess what? Defense, goal line stop. They turned the page really quickly, and it just speaks to the team. Speaks to the team, the leadership, much better than it was against Detroit. And so I'm glad to see that they're really improving in that area. But I'm really impressed, along with so many other people, about Lenore. And I'm happy, man. I'm happy at least Lenore has been ste stepping up, you know, because Ambry Thomas was inactive in this game. And um, so was Aaron Banks. Um, <clears throat> Zach Kerr was another inactive. So... Um, we're going to need guys to step up, and Lenore has been one of those guys stepping up. Um, I mean, we touched on Jimmy Garoppolo. Jimmy Garoppolo. Uh, again, there was times where dude couldn't – I mean, he was he was inaccurate. That's all you can really say. He was inaccurate. He had protection. He just wasn't putting the ball where it needed to be. But Kyle Shanahan didn't panic. Kept Garoppolo, Garoppolo, and this offense settled down, and they were able to finally get something going. Credit to the defense for keeping them in the game, but then credit to this offense for not allowing the first half, pretty much. The first, I mean, you could say the first 25 minutes of the game to impact, to impact. So, um, <clears throat> that has been a huge test. And again, the Eagles have a very good defensive front. So they faced a very talented defensive front team. And I think they, they voted well. I want to talk about Aziz. Aziz Al Shair. I think he took a step back in this game. Um, he had a couple of missed tackles, and and so um, I anticipate the opposition uh, really going after Lenore, really going after um, Norman and Aziz. And um, Aziz, I mean, he did okay in some plays, but I think he took a step back from what we saw in Detroit. So that's something to just keep an eye out for. Um Street, I think Street and Street and Arden Key have been solid. Arden Key had, I think, a couple of pressures in this game. Doesn't get counted for sacks, but I mean, you force the ball out quickly, and Street in the run game has been outstanding. So I think, uh, I think we're pretty solid there. Kittle. Kittle is one of those guys who settled down, too. Um, he had a couple of uh, missed blocks early, I want to say. I forget what they were. But after that, Kittle was like, nope, I'm blocking everything. And he did. He blocked everything. Guy is just amazing to watch. You watch him just, like, block. He's taking the guys to the ground. Like, there's no hope for that defender to get back into the play because he's just removing him. And sometimes he's removing two guys as we saw in Detroit. So um, George Kittle is just a gift that keeps on giving. Um, we talked about Ward and Tart. I think they're, they're so underrated when it comes to safety talk. And those two, yeah, they're not going to give you the numbers, those interceptions, but they do everything so well, so clean. Ward did have that stupid penalty um, when he hit Hurts running out of bounds. But, I mean, what do you expect 
a defender to do at that point. You expect them to just be like, all right, I'm just going to sit here next to the sideline and wait for you to hit me because I can't hit you. I can't commit right now. So I think that that's just putting a defender in a tough spot. And um, I didn't really, I didn't really think that was a big deal, but Ward and Tart have been consistently good year in and year out. Um, we talked about Hasty. I mean, Hasty did have a gushy, uh, gushy run, if you want to call it. Um, but after that, he he, I mean, he talked about the fumble toss. It didn't end up like being a huge deal because the Eagles on that same play got a personal foul. And so we got an automatic first down, but it was just a bad look. And then, then you bring in Sermon, then he like fumbles and gets hurt. Um, now that ended up being a penalty, but it's just, uh, it's just not a good look for hasty. You want to just be consistent and it wasn't like anything crazy, crazy. He just took the eyes out the ball and, it dropped. And in a key moment like that, you don't you need to trust these guys. So that would have been big time if the Eagles would have picked it up and they're down. At that time, I want to say they were down six. Either way. I thought overall there were a lot of good things, a lot of things to improve, but it wasn't like red flags. That's that's the very important thing. Like there were players who um, really like didn't play well early, but then progressive, like they progressed over time during the game and they got an opportunity to kind of redeem themselves like a Jimmy Garoppolo and then like a Lenore. So um, I feel like, yes, the Niners should have played better and they probably should have blown this team out. But given what transpired early, they responded. They played like the more seasoned team. They played like the more um, veteran type of team, a team that's been there, done that. And I think that's going to bode well for the Niners moving forward, moving on into the season. It's going to be one of those like we've been in this position before. We've been there and done that with Jimmy. We've come fr from behind. You know, <clears throat> so getting all these experiences, I think, is going to be a season just like that. A lot of these games are going to be close, nail biters. I don't think the Niners, I'm trying to see, I don't think the Niners will dominate like they did in 2019, but it's a different team this time that's been battle tested. So you're going to get a lot of these games where they win like they did on Sunday. And I think that's not a terrible thing. Like, there's different ways to win. So I'm excited for next week. They play Green Bay. I think this is one of, people will say, one of the first tests for the Niners, right? But we don't know what Green Bay does well now. Like, they tonight, they play Monday night. It's going to show how much they respond, right? If they have a close game with the Lions, I mean, how serious do you take Green Bay? Yeah, they have Aaron Rodgers, but how much more serious do you take them? I don't know. I'm I'm really interested to see them tonight, and they have a short week. We are coming back from the East Coast, first home game. <sighs> it's hard to root against Aaron, Ro Aaron Rodgers, like in that position, but it's also hard to root against the Niners in the first home game. It's going to be excited, and I think it's a big test, more so to Green Bay than the Niners. But 2-0, uh, and o, if your team ain't 2-0, and o, I can't relate. I'm going to enjoy this week. And probably have another video in the middle of the week to talk about the rest of the teams in the NFC West because uh, Seahawks lost, the Cardinals won a close game, the Rams won. So the NFC West is going to be a bloodbath, man. And I'm not looking forward to it at all. We talk about these close games 
every time you face an NFC West opponent, it's not going to be easy. And so we're almost going to be cannibalizing ourselves, which is not good if you're a Niners fan. I mean, we know this division is tough, but geez, man. Jeez. All right, guys. Well, thank you all for watching. And as always, we'll see you on the next one. Peace.